Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Alright, so this is part four of the exponent series and this is sort of an odds and ends. So we'll be talking about things like to a power of zero, to the power of one, when you throw negatives, variables, just some different cases that might give people pause. So here's our first one, talking about five or just any number, to the power of one or five to the power of zero. What are these? Well, if it, think about it, five squared is five times five, five cubed, five times five times five. Well, five to the first, I'm gonna erase my five to the zero for now. Five to the first would just be five. So here we have three fives, here we have two fives, and here we have one five. So any number to the first is just that number. And this applies if it were an exponent as well. X to the power of one is just X. This comes in handy, say if it was something like this, X to the power of five times X. We know our rule says we have to add our exponents. Well, if we understand that X is the same as X to the power of one, then I can add those exponents. Five plus one is six. There we go. Same as if we were dividing. X to the power of four divided by X. If I know X is the same as X to the power of one, I can subtract those exponents. Four minus one is three. So that's why this comes in handy, why it's useful. Well, what about something to the power of zero. This isn't as intuitive. You go, oh, well, if five to the power of one is just five, well, five to the power of zero, that must be just zero. There's no anything. Nope, 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 nope. It is just one. This is true for any number. X to the power of zero is one. 472,000 to the power of <laughs> zero. <laughs> I made Mickey Mouse. To the power of zero is one. Anything to the power of zero is just one. And you go, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, it, it does. If I said five to the power of three divided by five to the power of three, three minus three is zero five to the power of zero or one. And this is a true statement. Let's multiply this. Five cubed, five times five times five is 125. If I divide that by five times five times five or 125, do I get zero? No, I get one. That's why five to the power of zero is one. And that's it keeps all of these statements true. Same thing, if I said five to the power of negative two times five to the power of two, two plus negative two is zero, five to the power of zero is one. Well, let's write this out and see what it actually is. Five to the power of negative two is, using our little rule about fractions, one over five squared. 5 squared. If we want to multiply these together, I'll turn this into a little fraction. I get 5 squared over 5 squared. 5 squared divided by 5 squared is 1. So that's why. And that's why it makes sense and it works even though I know at first blush you're like, what? 5 to the power of 0 is 1. What? Well, that's why. Okay, so that's our zeros and our 1s. A little more with the negative numbers. Let's say if I have, I'm just using base five for all of these. Why? I don't know. Why not? What if I had five to the power of negative two and five to the power of negative three? Two times negative two plus negative. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm combining my next three sentences into one. 
getting ahead of myself. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. This rule still works even if they're both negative. Let's see why it works. 1 uh, over 5 squared is the same as 5 to the power of negative 2. 1 over 5 cubed is the same there as um, 5 to the power of negative 3. If I multiply those together, I get 1 over 5 to the power of 5 because I'm doing my little to multiply those together. 2 plus 3 is 5 and that is the same. All right, so that works. What if it's something like this? 5 to the power of negative 2 times 5 to the power of 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Does this work? Yes, it does. Because this is 1 over 5 squared. This is just 5 to the 4th. If I multiply those together, I get 5 to the 4th over 5 squared, or 5 to the 4th divided by 5 squared. I can look at this two different ways. I can say, well, 5 to the 4th divided by 5 squared. I need to subtract those exponents. 4 minus 2 gives me 5 squared. Or I could write it out. 5 to the power of 4 over 5 squared. Cross out ones that are the same that cancel each other out. And I get 5 times 5, 5 squared. No matter how I do it, I'm getting the same answer. So this is true. All right? What if I had something like this? 7 to the power of negative 2 divided by 7 to the power of negative 3. Okay? So our rule says when division we subtract. So that's negative 2 minus a negative 3. Negative 2 minus a negative, which is the same as plus, plus a positive. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So this should be 7 to the power of 1. All right, well, let's see if this is true. Switch back to a less rainbowy color. All right, there we go. 1 over 7 squared is the same as 7 to the power of negative 2. We say that's divided by 7 to the power of negative 3. That's 1 over 7 to the power of 3. Well, if you remember about dividing fractions, when we divide fractions, it's the same as multiplying by the inverse or reciprocal. So it's the same as this. Okay, so if I multiply those together, I get 7 cubed on the top, 7 squared on the bottom. And again, if I call this 7 cubed divided by 7 squared, I subtract 3 minus 2 gives me 1. Same answer. Or if I want to write it out and actually see it, 7 times 7 times 7 over 7 times 7. Cancel out top and bottom, the ones that match. And again, I'm left with just 7. So this does work. Same thing. It always works even if they are negative numbers. And yes, this also works if I have something like this. Okay. Remember with these, power to a power, we multiply. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And that's true. Let's break it down. 6 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 6 squared. Okay? This to the power of negative 3, we're inverting it again. Because it's all this to the power of negative 3. So we are inverting it, which puts it back to 6 squared, and then cubing it. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So it still works. Even though it looks strange, you're like, eh, do these rules work? Yes, they always are going to work. If I had something like this, 6 squared 
divided by 6 to the 5th. I subtract 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 6 to the power of negative 3. Is this true? Well, 6 squared is 6 times 6 divided by 6 to the 5th. Right? Like terms, not sorry, like terms, but the same terms, top and bottom, cancel out. And I'm left with 1 over 6 times 6 times 6, or 6 cubed. And that's the same as this. So yes, it always works. It always does. Okay, and all of these rules, if we have exponents, it's the same thing. x cubed times x squared, same deal. We have the same base. We can multi multiply x cubed times x squared. The base stays the same, and we add our exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. Same sort of deal if we have the same um, exponents. Well, this one you just know is going to be x squared times y squared, which uh, <laughs> is actually the same if we follow our rule, x times y squared. So the rule still works, even though it looks a little different because we're used to just writing it as x squared times y squared. Because our rule says if we had 5 squared times 7 squared, that's the same as 5 times 7 squared. And sure enough, x times y squared is the same as x squared y squared. So these, these things, they, they always work. They always work. These rules are rules here for a reason. Isn't that fancy? We've reviewed all these things about exponents. I hope it's been helpful. Tried to cover every different little permutation of these common exponential things that I could think of. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything that you think needs to be covered in a future video on exponents, please leave it in the comments below. And you know, we will take a look at, I will take a look at that and see if that's something we can make a future video out of. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.